Hey there. A few weeks ago, I triggered a woke person. Whoa. <laughs> you know, normally that wouldn't be worthy of blathering by this boomer. Because after all, triggering a woke person is about as common as sand on a beach, corruption in Washington, D.C., or Jewish guilt. But in this particular case, the person who I triggered was the wife. Oh, I, sh I shouldn't say wife. The the uh, the birthing person life companion of a friend of mine who I've been friends with since freshman year of college, 51 years, half a century, half a century of friendship. So and it appears the friendship is either seriously damaged or seriously dead. So I refuse to let a half a century of friendship die and be buried without a proper wake. So welcome to the wake. Now, this is not the first time by far that I stumbled into a, a triggered woke person who goes crazy after over something I said that I didn't think was a big deal. Three years ago, in, uh, in early March of 2021, I, I broke my own rule and made a political post on Facebook. I had learned because of everything in 2016, all the horrible, horrible things that were said to me. I, I vote because I voted for Jill Stein. I was called a misogynist, among many other things, and I'm personally responsible for Trump being elected. But I digress. The, the point is, I was I was sticking to grandchildren and uh, and music as far as Facebook goes, and keeping my political stuff on Twitter. Totally separate separate stuff. But when Dr. Seuss was excluded from National Reading Day. And I'll, I'll get to why that, how, how bad that is, because some of his books were declared racist and his publisher had stopped printing some of them. I could not abide. So I made the following post on Facebook after changing my profile picture to the cover of Green Eggs and Ham. So here's what I said on Facebook in March of 2021. My profile picture was my way of silent protest because I have committed to not putting politics on Facebook. But I simply cannot remain silent on this issue. It's officially gone too far. One can make an argument for or against stop the stopping of the printing of these books, but that's not the point. My own feeling is that erasing our past prevents us from learning from it. But that's just my opinion. The point is, and what I cannot abide, is the fact that Dr. Seuss the very person who's beloved by for who's beloved for making reading fun. Remember reading Dr. Seuss books when you were a kid? Yeah. <laughs> for me for reading fun for multiple generations, mine being one of them, was excluded from Read Across America Day. Oh yeah, not National Reading Day, Read Across America Day. A day which falls for a reason on Dr. Seuss's birthday. Sorry. Uh, by the way, Obama created Read Across America Day in honor of Dr. Seuss. Doesn't get much more woke than that. Anyway, so, and I say that in a good way. Sorry, I feel this is very Orwellian. Like, who controls the past controls the future? And it's sadly becoming typical of times in which we find ourselves living. This is not the beginning of this, and it's not likely to be the end of it either. Be careful what you wish for, folks, because we are riding on a scary road that if we remain silent will lead us directly to cultural totali totalitarianism. Okay, now I'll go back to music and grandkids. So what followed was a lot of unfriending in both directions, a couple of blocks, and this gem of a direct message from a person that I knew a long time ago who said the following. Your white insecurities, which cause you to equate challenging your white bias and fragilities with fascist thought control, would be comic if it weren't so deadly. You aren't that far at all from all the white men who stormed the Capitol building. <laughs> How the fuck do you conflate, conflate my defending Dr. Seuss with January 6th? But there we were. Anyway, she goes on. Calling out the racist impact of the things that white people do and say is not writing them off cancel culture or anything other than speaking the truth, as if I give a shit whether we are Facebook, whether we are Facebook friends or not. 
here's my favorite part. Signing on to become a hippie means never having to silently tolerate a big white asshole strutting around and shooting his mouth off. Wow. But the sad truth is, she won. Because ever since then, I've been pretty silent on Facebook. Now, I'm not silent on Twitter, but that's a separate conversation. And in the years that ensued, there's been a lot of arguments. I mean, I had one guy, a good friend of mine from Brooklyn, who I love, tell me when we were discussing the uh, the 2020 election and going back and forth on the, the, the legitimacy or lack thereof, he actually said, I don't care if the election was rigged, whatever it takes to get rid of Trump. And that's when I said to him, there's no future in our talking politics. I mean, you know, if, if we want to be friends, we can't even talk politics if that's how you feel. So that friendship has survived. But the one I'm going to talk about right now probably won't. So these, this friend of mine of 51 years and his uterus sparing person that he was with, that he's been, they've been, they've been married. Is married still a good word? For 41 years. I was actually at the wedding. Um, they had come to visit me last April, April of 22. And uh, he and I were playing music, having a great time. Um, but every so often in between songs, the conversation got a little bit political and I started kind of, you know, they would say things that they would assume they assumed I was agreeing with, but I wasn't. And that's one of the things that happens when you're dealing with woke people. They will say things and then basically you have a choice between sitting there and tacit and and just kind of eating your kishkas out but not wanting to get into it with them or speaking your truth and basically risking losing friendships. So in April of last year, I chose to maintain the friendship and kind of stayed silent, even though they said a lot of stuff that I found very disagreeable. But that wasn't the case three, three weeks ago because I've had enough. So they, they, they found themselves in Southern California and we decided to meet up for dinner. They showed up a half hour late, by the way. And as, uh, as what's his name, Al Pacino says in, in his role of Jimmy Hoffa in, in Martin Scorsese's The Irishman, if you're more than 10 minutes late, you're saying something. They were 30 minutes late, so they were really saying something. But I let that go. I stood up and gave, gave I don't think I gave her a hug, but I gave him a hug. And we sat down and for the next 40 minutes, I kind of listened to them talk about their lives and got a few words in edgewise. It was fun. I just wanted, to, I was in survival mode. I just wanted to survive the dinner. And then she started talking about her electric car and they were lamenting the lack of charging stations on the internet highway system, which is a legitimate complaint. And then she said that she gets 120 miles out of a $12 charge, which is kind of pathetic, by the way, but it's only 10 cents a mile. Anyone who knows me knows that I'm a math person, so I immediately start calculating formulas, et cetera, et cetera, 10 cents a mile. Then I started saying out loud, okay, let's say you drive a gas vehicle that gets 30 miles to a gallon and gas costs six bucks a gallon. But I never got to the end of that sentence when she inter interjected, well, I am saving the planet by driving an electric car. I believe in saving the planet. Her exact words was, well, I believe in saving the planet. So now we got virtue signaling. And now it's like, ugh but I'm still trying to behave myself. So I responded with, well, I believe in math and I'm just trying to calculate the difference between driving an electric car and a gas car. So they indulged me and it turns out, of course, that per, gap, per, per mile you're getting, you're paying less, do, less dollars per mile in a, an electric car. That's all fine, not the point whatsoever. The point is, the whole tone of the of the dinner conversation changed at that moment, but I'm still hanging on. The check came. We go back and forth. We, we, we pay the check. And then somehow the subject of the person I supported in 2020, anybody who knows me knows who that was. I don't want to go into it, but they don't like her. <laughs> and, uh, and when I mentioned her name, I heard the scoff. Complete with the. 
you know the look. So at that point, she said to me in a very, very derisive way, what do you think about them take about them banning gas stoves? As if there was a right answer that I better get right. But I think I gave the wrong answer because my answer was, I think banning gas stoves is a bunch of woke nonsense. Now, honestly, honestly, I didn't have the receipts to really say that with any kind of conviction. But it was on at that point. And, uh, and by the way, further research has revealed that I believe it really is a bunch of woke nonsense. Anyway, I'm still trying to salvage things. So I said, okay, fine. Let's talk about things we can agree with. Let's talk about George Santos. Now, I think no matter what your political persuasion, we all could agree that George Santos does not belong in Congress. And I, I got a couple of head nods. And I said, yeah, well, we got to give George credit because he's done the impossible, the unthinkable, as it were. He's brought together the neocons, the neolibs, the conservatives, the liberals, the Democrats. Everybody agrees George Santos doesn't belong in Congress. So I kind of felt like things were going, were getting better. And maybe I could end this dinner on some kind of positive note, because I really didn't want to, at that point, throw the friendship away. But I took it a step further and apparently this was my fatal error because I said now what I was trying to say was I like to believe we all agree that abortion after a baby is born is wrong and I also like to think we all agree and by all I mean the three of us that were sitting at the table I like to also think we all agree that abortion 10 seconds after conception is not a big deal and where I was going with it was, if we can agree on those two extremes, then the only difference we have is where the line is drawn. But I didn't even get nearly that far. I never even got to the conception part of it when she stood up, pushed her chair in, said, I got to go to the bathroom and stomped off. So I looked at my friend who, who wasn't really too heavily participating in the political part of the conversation. I'm like, Whoa, whoa, what was that? And his answer was, she doesn't like men, especially white men, talking about abortion. Wow, okay. <laughs> so I guess, I, I, I guess I'm not allowed to talk about abortion in the eyes of, of woke people. What are you going to do? And then he asked me a, a really interesting question. He said, he wants to know, what do I mean by woke? And what I, my answer was, I can't really define woke, but I can give some examples. And I said, if you think it's okay for biological six foot four men to compete with female swimmers in a competition, you're probably woke. If you think that calling the legitimate peace rally that just happened in Washington, D.C., a, uh, a pro-Russia rally, which is what Rachel Maddow did, <laughs> and I'm not going to get into that right now, but I'm because I'm talking like her and I got to stop. Okay, no more, no more matter. Um, anyway, a couple of examples of woke and she came stomping out of the bathroom. Body language clearly indicating she wasn't sitting back down. It was time to go. We walked out of the restaurant. Our cars were parked in opposite directions. We had an awkward moment when we walked outside. As she walked away and he and I were not sure whether to hug or, or just go on and I decided to just say, hey, drive carefully and, uh, and I'll see you next time. And I turned around and walked back to my car. Found out that in the aftermath, by the way, that he badmouthed me to a mutual friend. Anyway, I'm sorry it's taken me 14 minutes to actually get to the point of this video. But what happened is I went on Twitter, called a couple of friends and asked for examples of wokeness. And the response was overwhelming. And I sincerely apologize to anybody who submitted an example of wokeness that's not being included here. But here goes. And of course, number one is if you think it's okay for biological men to compete in women's sports. If you brag about all the people you've canceled, but also vehemently deny the existence of cancel culture, you're not just woke, but talking to you can be very confusing. If you think it's okay to fire or suspend people for using the wrong pronouns, 
you might be woke. Speaking of pronouns, pronouns, if you introduce yourself with your pronouns, you're either woke or you're pandering to your woke friends, which, well, that pretty much means you're woke. And by the way, and thank you, Charlie, for this one. By the way, if you can name more pronouns than U.S. presidents, you are most definitely woke. If you think homophobia, misogyny, or racism cost Lori Lightfoot her re-election, you're probably woke. And the person who called me a misogynist because I voted for Jill Stein is not only woke, but clearly needs a biology lesson. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, th this person wanted to stay anonymous, but uh, she gave me. If you feel you need to broadcast your vaccination status using Facebook profile frames, you probably woke. If you think we should defund the police, but you're protected by a private security force, well, woke or not, you're probably a Democrat congressperson. If you refer to pedophiles as minor attracted persons, let me repeat that. If you refer to pedophiles as minor attracted persons, which is a thing now, you are not only woke, but you stay the fuck away from my grandkids. If you, so, yeah. if you think the fact that Walter Cronkite was a straight white cis male means that he wasn't actually credible, not only are you woke, but now we're at war. You could, you could end my friendships. You can write me nasty letters on Facebook, but do not fuck with Walter Cronkite. If you think Rachel Maddow has more credibility than Jimmy Dore. Oh, speaking of Jimmy Dore. It's the guy in this in this shirt. I have a message for Jimmy. Jim, Jim, Jimbo, Jimbalaya. You got something wrong, and, and I can't abide it. And I love you, but you really got this one wrong. At the end of your videos, you always announce all your upcoming shows, and I've been to many of them, and I love your act. But the town in upstate New York you're playing at in a couple of months is not Cohoes. It's Cohoes. Get it right, James. Cohoes, because if you want people in the Albany, New York area to come to your show, and by the way, I went to college in Albany, so I know how Cohoes is pronounced. If you want people to come to your show, get it right. And if you actually correct it, well, first of all, when I saw your show a year or two ago, and at the end of the sh your show, you said, grab a shirt on your way out. I really thought you meant grab a shirt on your way out. I didn't think you meant grab a shirt on your way out and pay for it. So I grabbed one of these really cool shirts. I didn't pay for it, but I owe you 20 bucks. But if you correct Cohoes, I will pay 40 bucks for this shirt. I'll pay, in fact, I'll pay 100 bucks for this shirt. $100, all you have to do is change Cohoes to Cohoes. Easiest fazool you'll ever make. Back to the list. If you virtue signal for any reason whatsoever, yeah, because you're not superior to me. You know, you're not superior to anybody. You you might be very well well meaning. I mean, I, I was there for decades. I'm I'm a I'm an old school liberal hippie, you know. But uh, leftism now isn't what it used to be, and I can't abide by virtue signaling. It's like let's respect each other's opinions. That's what the left is supposed to be about. If you're of the opinion that your opinions are actually facts. Well, that doesn't really make you woke. That makes you insufferable. So how'd that get in there? Here's one from me. If you kept watching the Connors after Roseanne was given the shaft. If you wear a mask when you're alone in your car, that doesn't make you woke. It just makes you weird. If you proudly display a mantle full of participation trophies, you're probably woke. If you think diversity is more important than merit, especially when it comes to things like airline pilots and surgeons. God help you if you ever have to have surgery or fly on an airplane. If you think Daniel Ellsberg was a hero, but Julian Assange belongs in prison, well, maybe woke, but there's another word that fits better. I'm not going to say the word, but I'll give you a hint. It rhymes with flippocrite. If you think Russia hacked the DNC server, you're probably woke. <laughs> if you think the history of Ukraine started when Russia invaded in February 2022, no, you're woke. 
If the suggestion you might have TDS causes you have to have a major emotional snit. Hello, Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> if you think COVID came from a bat. <laughs> if you blame the unvaccinated for the spread of COVID while wearing purple hair and a nose ring, you're probably woke. <laughs> if you think your gender was randomly assigned at birth. Well, yeah, it was randomly, was randomly assigned and basically you were given whatever chromosomes and sex organs you have. Anyway, if while discussing politics, you can't go more than 30 seconds without saying the word Trump, you are probably woke. And here's one, another one from me. If you can watch, I tried this. <laughs> and uh, if you can watch The View for more than 10 minutes without puking all over your shoes, don't try it at home. And don't blame me if, if this happens. If you think voter ID is racist, I guess uh, you're not just woke, but you have a problem with election, election integrity. And then finally, if you want people to get rid of their gas stoves, and very finally, if you think Dr. Seuss was a racist. So that's all I got. Um, please feel free to add more to this, either, with the, either comments on this video or on my Twitter page. And uh, thank you very much for listening. This has been 21 minutes worth of blather that I hope you have not considered to be a waste of time. I really, really cherish everybody who watches this. Um, I have like 163 subscribers, and that's about 162 more than I ever thought I would have. So thank you, everybody who subscribed. I'm not going to do the, the uh, horror thing that most podcasters do and say, like and subscribe. I don't give a shit if you do or not, but I do like it if you do. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. Here I am. I am blathering. You just heard me blathering. I'm the blathering boomer. And the boomer has blathered. Peace out.